Hello, welcome to Team Mia Dice's presentation today. We are students from Raffles Girls School Secondary participating in Robocop Rescue Line U19. Our members are Ling Yue, Emma, Chelsea, and Haley. Ling Yue and I are in charge of software, while Haley and Chelsea are the hardware designers. For this competition, we mainly use Lego Mindstorm EV3 for the hardware and EV3 Dev Python for the software. In this presentation, we will be touching on two main sections the hardware and the software designs. For the hardware designs, we will be covering the motor's wheels, bracing, claw, deposit, and the trigger. For the software designs, we will have a general outlook on the code, calibration, line tracking, green squares, blue cube, and obstacle detection, and lastly, the evacuation zone. This is how our robot looks like. For our motors and wheels, we have several considerations. The motors allow for differential drive, which means each wheel is able to move individually. If these motors control the axle track, they need to be properly spaced out. As the base structure, they also need to balance the robot well. To do this, it was placed as wide as possible. The bracing of the wheels prevents them from falling out and also acts as a structural support for the wheels to stay in a triangular shape. As the robot needs to go up the ramp later, it also needs to be shorter so as to prevent its center of gravity from affecting it. An ideal wheel for this robot will provide sufficient friction and allow for even weight distribution. Great stress might cause the robot to fall apart, hence a caterpillar track was used is wide and capable of spreading the pressure exerted by the robot, instead of concentrating it on one single wheel joint. The overall bracing of this robot was mainly made to provide rigidity and stability for the robot. The medium motor was also to be kept close to the robot. Furthermore, it has to ensure that the motor does not tilt nor fall. Another important component of the robot is the brain. It needs to be held in place, preferably towards the center. As it is the heaviest individual part of the robot, it needs to be firmly in place. Thus, beams were used. Two important considerations for the sensor is the spacing between it and the position it is placed at to ensure that it is able to perform line track and detect items in front of it. This sensor spacing was optimal as it fulfilled both these criteria. The position of the sensor on the robot is also important for good performance. A favorable position for the sensor will be between the wheels for a shorter delay between the sensor's collected data and the action the robot takes. It needs to be 1 cm off the ground as it needs to go up the ramp, but not too high so it can sense the objects and ground values. In this competition, the depositing of the cube will be a multiplier and a grab and lift claw was needed. However, there are only four ports for the motor wires and only one motor could be used for the claw. Hence, we decided to incorporate both grabbing and lifting into one design. We needed to sweep the objects to the center of the claw before detection. For this to happen, the claw must have an angled piece to guide the cube and the boss towards the center. To increase friction, our bands were tied around the claw. Also, the claw itself was too light and will move upwards before closing. Thus, we place weights to hold it down. The lifting is an equally important part of the claw. The gears used are 90 degree ones that are aligned horizontally and vertically. These allow the lifting mechanism to be applied immediately after grabbing the object. As this was something prone to disturbance caused by misalignment, it was better to use 90 degree gears for clear alignment. The deposit was made at a good size to fit all potential objects this is to act as a safety net to ensure that it's able to hold three ping pong balls at any given time. The buttons needed to be accessible as part of the rules, so instead of covering the entire area with beams or axles, we used the movable flap and spaced out the axles. As the deposit is fixed, objects have to slide down towards the trigger during the actual depositing, so it was angled down. The plastic piece was added to reduce friction. The height of the deposit limited how much the deposit could do. The length of the cloth was also taken into consideration. Lastly, the trigger. It has a motor that allows it to be used multiple times for multiple deposits. The flip of the trigger prevents objects from falling out when not supposed to. Thus, it is big and blocks the entire side of the deposit. However, during the actual depositing of the objects, it should be able to go down at least 90 degrees. We will now be moving on to software designs. Our code has three main components, the preparation stage, line track, and evacuation zone. In the preparation stage, we started off with getting the raw RGB values of the different colors. Then the values are calibrated. Calibration is an important process of coding. This is because raw RGB values are different, so errors have to be calculated for smoother runs. The scaling of RGB values also ensures accuracy of error between the left and right values. 
Next, we coded the robot to track the black line using proportional control. When both color sensors sense black, the robot suspends the line tracking and checks for green squares. When it senses objects, it stops to pick it up. When it senses obstacles, it will stop to avoid them. How this works is that we obtain error by calculating the difference between right scale RGB values and left scale RGB values. Then we multiply the error to an appropriate coefficient and the product is the steering of the robot. The line gap is a part of the competition map. In this situation, proportional control is used. With accurate proportional control, the robot can pass the line gap as the error calculated is very close to zero. Thus, the robot goes straight at the line gap. This is a clip of our robot clearing the gap. This is a short clip of our robot doing the S-shaped curve. As you can see, it is tracking the line very accurately due to good calibration and proportional control. When the robot senses a green square, it moves backward for a fixed short distance such that when the robot stops, both of the sensors stop at the place where green squares should be located. Then the robot is commanded to turn in the presence of green squares or move forward if white color is detected. Because of different cases on the map, we have developed some simple turning techniques. For example, in order to turn left, the robot moves forward for a short distance when its left sensor detects green. It is to align with the black line for the robot to track later. The right color sensor will move past the black line so the next time it senses black will be the targeted black line. A while loop is used to keep the robot turning to the left until its right sensor detects black for it to stop nicely at the targeted black line. After a successful turn, it resumes line tracking. In this competition, we chose the level 2 blue cube since it was a multiplier. When the blue cube is detected, the clock picks up the blue cube and lifts it up into the deposit before moving downwards to its starting position. The long stopping time ensures that everything is in position for secure picking up. When an obstacle is detected, the robot moves to its left for a fixed distance, then to the right before turning to the black line and continuing with line tracking. This turning uses a while loop to ensure that the robot can return to the black line and continue with proportional control. When entering the evacuation zone, there will be a red line. Upon detecting the line, the robot will exit the line track code and switch over to the evacuation zone code. The, ev the evacuation zone code enables the robot to sweep the evacuation zone of victims and find the deposit box. After rescuing all the victims, the robot will sweep the evacuation zone to find the blue line. Then the robot will resume line tracking. The main aspect of the evacuation zone will be the blind sweeping. For our robot, it moves in a straight line until it senses a color that is not white. It then exits the while loop and makes a U-turn, alternating between left and right. This path was chosen because it allows us to both hard code and align the robot such that it does not get lost in the zone while maximizing the space covered to increase the odds of the robot picking up a ping pong ball. For the depositing of the object, when the front color sensor detects black, the robot will move backwards for a, for, for a fixed distance, turn left 90 degrees, and then move back for a short distance before rotating the trigger to deposit. This is to make sure that the robot aligns with the deposit box so that the ping pong ball can be deposited into the box instead of missing it. After depositing, the robot is hard-coded to move to the blue line. In the process of this competition, we have learned many things. It was both of our first times building a robot for a competition, so it was an eye-opening experience that was exciting, but provided its fair share of challenges. We had to improvise at times too. This taught us to think outside the box for solutions. In addition, we had to rebuild the mo robot multiple times, but that taught us to learn from failure. There were many ups and downs while preparing the code for this competition. There were times when we felt disappointed when we progressed by trial and error. However, we learned to be resilient. For the both of us, it was also our first time coding an actual robot in EV3 Dev, which allowed us to gain more knowledge about coding. There was a lot of planning to be done that made us more organized. Lastly, after decoding many bugs, we learned to be more patient and careful, checking every line before testing the whole function. In the time we had to prepare for this competition, COVID was ongoing. Only one of us could bring home the box and the other had to work with no parts. There was also only one robot which we had to share with the coders. To overcome this challenge, we made a timeline and through that, we could align our work. As the deadline of the materials drew near, another semi-circle breaker happened and we could not finish building. Hence, we planned the robot before building it so it would be done much quicker. The COVID-19 situation also made it difficult for the coders to finish the software since we were unable to meet up physically. We had to meet online to discuss. This was very inconvenient because only one person could share screen at once and sometimes in my leg. However, we learned to adapt and also started exploring other online platforms or softwares like Visual Studio Code. Not being able to meet physically also made communication difficult. However, we were able to overcome the challenges. 
To conclude our presentation, we would like to thank Mr. Kenneth Chow for his expert mentoring, our teachers in charge, Mr. Yo Pui Hong and Mrs. Liao for their constant guidance and care, our CCA members for their unwavering support and encouragement, and last but not least, the Rubber Cup organizers for giving us this invaluable opportunity. Thank you, everyone.